<laughs> okay, let's talk about these questions. Number one, the film, this is the most popular question. A lot of groups chose number one. The film isn't very scary. Do you think it's still a horror film? We have two different answers, obviously. Some people say yes, some people say no. Um, the people who say yes think it's a horror movie because it has a lot of things that we expect from a horror movie. Blood and, and gore, demons and monsters, people dying. And uh, even some points that uh, look like they're supposed to be scary. So if we look at what's in the movie, it does seem like a horror movie. People who say no basically all agree it's not a horror movie because it's not scary. Uh, and instead of trying to be as scary as possible, the movie also tries to be funny, also tries to do other things. Um, but I think um, the most interesting answer came from the group that said that we can put both of these together. Depending on what's in the film, we can decide whether it's horror or not. But if it's not scary, maybe it's just a bad horror film. Right? Maybe it, the filmmakers did try to scare us and they failed. Um, I think that answer is very interesting. It takes into it takes both sides into account. Um, but we can also consider question four, and we'll talk about this later. Maybe the film isn't trying to be scary. Maybe there are scenes that look like they could be scary so that we are sure it's a horror movie, but then the film tries to make us feel and think about other things also. Uh, we'll talk about this a bit later on question four. Number two, uh, the practical special effects. How does that make you feel? Uh, one group chose this question, uh, and they believe that the practical special effects make it feel more convincing, more real. If the entire thing were in CGI, some scenes, according to this group, would make you feel like it's fake. You, you, you have a hard time believing what's going on. But when they use a uh, real liquid and they like actually put uh the thick the wounds or the scars on the actor's body uh, and they actually like lift the actors in the air uh, it makes it easier for us to follow and uh pretend to believe what's going on in the movie um but there is uh one point in the movie that relies on some kind of visual effect and that is when Jennifer dies, when Needy stabs her, and then after Jennifer dies, the color of her skin becomes more human, more colorful, a bit redder, uh, so that we know that the demon has left Jennifer's body and then Jennifer has died. Uh, so I talked about this point with that group, and the group said that maybe this was a combination of practical and digital effects. Maybe they made the actor Megan Fox look rosier and healthier, and they used digital effects to take away that color before Jennifer died. And according to that group, because part of that effect is practical, it still felt quite convincing to them. Uh, and we can keep that in mind the next time you go see the next Marvel movie where everything is digital. How real does it really feel? Like, do you guys know how digital a Marvel movie is? Even the backgrounds are digital. You basically, you just take two actors, put them in costumes, let them stand in a green room and talk. And everything is added later. Sorry, uh, moving on. Question three. One group took this question about the male gaze. Uh, and I think their answer was also quite interesting because uh, their group had both boys and girls. Oh, wait, you guys are college students. Had both men and women. Uh, and the woman who answered the question 
said that she wasn't sure whether the film was trying to provide uh, joy and pleasure to men. But the male group members said that when looking at Jennifer and, or the actor Megan Fox, they did not think that she was sexy, mainly because they, uh, following the movie, they understood that Jennifer uses her sex appeal to seduce and kill men. So because that is the character, what, what, what is presented as sexy then becomes dangerous. So instead of enjoyment, it becomes a threat. But then this group also noted that there's one scene where the two female uh, characters, Jennifer and Needy, kiss. And there doesn't seem to be a reason for them to kiss. And the men in that group also said that that scene was more enjoyable to them as men. So it does seem like parts of this movie use the male gaze. Uh, most of it is, we can say that it weaponizes the male gaze. It turns the male gaze into a weapon. But then there are a few parts that do seem to give in and uh, present what could be pleasurable to men watching the movie. Um, I find this very interesting because it seems to be saying that uh, on the one hand, I know what you are expect, or it recognizes what many traditional viewers of this kind of movie want from the presentation of the female characters. But at the same time, it denies uh, this kind of male viewer pure enjoyment. It's kind of like holding up a toy in front of a cat. Right? The cat knows the toy is there, but because you're not giving it the toy, the cat gets angry or feels a negative emotion. Kind of like what Jennifer does to the boys in the film, right? She presents herself as available uh, and at the last moment killable. Okay, number four. The tone is not very serious. Why do you think it's not very serious? What is the purpose? One group took this question and they said this could be a way to cover up flaws. So maybe some parts of the film are not very good. And to distract us, the filmmakers uh, make the film less serious so that we would not want to look too closely at what is going on. So they mentioned uh, a few examples. One is the clothing and makeup does not seem to be uh, what high schoolers would really wear. Uh, another thing is the, like, the key event in the film when the band members are sacrificing Jennifer also seems to be not very realistic. Like if they really wanted to make a deal with the devil, I don't think they would do it that way. Maybe they would be more serious. Maybe they would feel more scared, whatever. Doesn't feel very convincing. Uh, and I also asked them about the logic of the plot. And they agreed that some parts of the story also don't make sense. For example, when Needy discovers Jennifer's uh, truth and she's trying to tell Chip uh, to be careful about Jennifer, she does not do a very good job. Uh, she does not really try to make Chip believe her. Uh, that part does not feel very convincing. But because according to this group, because the movie is presented in a lighthearted and not very serious way, maybe we would not want to examine it too closely. There's another possibility, which is that, uh, which is connected with question five. Maybe the tone adds to the allegory. Whatever this movie is about, maybe the tone uh, is connected with that. Nobody took this question, so I will answer it for you. This film, to me, seems to be an allegory about uh, female puberty and budding sexuality. At the point in a young woman's life when she starts to have some kind of sex appeal, but she doesn't yet know how to handle it or what to do about it. 
Uh, so in this story, we have two female characters, Jennifer and me. They are presented as opposites, right? Their personalities are opposite. Um, their sense of morality is opposite. Their relationship situation is also opposite. Nidhi has a boyfriend. Jennifer is a literal man-eater. Um, but the one thing that they do have in common is that they are both uh, aware of and exploring sex. Now, Jennifer keeps bragging about how early she had sex, whatever. But I, I think we can tell that she's still not entirely in control of uh, her sexuality. For example, uh, in the early bar scene, when she's trying to flirt with the band member, uh, I don't know about you, but that is not very good flirting. So she knows that men are attracted to her sexuality, but she's not entirely in control of how to use that sexuality. Uh, and of course, we get the scene where uh, uh, Needy, I think it's her first time having sex with Chip. And so she's exploring her sexuality in a more traditional way. So uh, we have two kinds of exploration of sexuality. One, Needy is more traditional uh, and acceptable in society. And Jennifer's way is more out of control, more dangerous. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, before we knew that she would eat the men she had, she pretends to want to have sex with, uh, maybe we, like me, would be afraid that Jennifer would be raped by the band members. So at that point, we feel like her sexuality could be dangerous for herself. But the movie very cleverly twists that around. Her sexuality is dangerous for the men. Um, and that could be an allegory for how a patriarchal society in general does not know how to handle a person who has sex appeal but is not in control of it. Uh, famously, feminists have brought up the idea of a Madonna horror complex, the idea that uh, in a patriarchal society, men traditionally only have two ways to look at women, as a saint or as someone to have sex with. And it's very hard to see women as something in between or as something more than that, as a whole person. It seems that this film is commenting on that idea in that men look at Jennifer either as a student or as somebody to have sex with. And the film takes revenge on men who do this by having Jennifer eat them. Okay, questions? Next week is the student chosen film. So far, nobody has chosen a film yet. If you have a film that you want to share with the class, please tell me at least two days before class. And if I can do it, I will do it. If I can't do it, I have prepared another film. Okay, see you next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.